What's up everyone? Good to see you. It's the 3rd of March. A little bit of uh, news today. Uh, McCoy Tyner, one of the greatest jazz and most influential jazz pianists, died yesterday at age 81. I'll be doing a video on him later this week. Um, today's lecture, I guess it's a lecture, like last week, is going to be an extension on what we talked about, kind of the next step from last week. Uh, I had a lot of great response from that lecture. Uh, I'm gonna extend the bundle sale today. There's a new discount code for today's, which is RB307. Uh, I have the YouTube Instagram transcription bundle, which is 160 pages together with my Beato book. 3.0, it's 600 and some odd pages, and it's half price for the two things combined. And you can buy the YouTube uh, Instagram transcription uh, PDF, 160 page, I think it's 168 pages, um, by itself. They're both on sale till tomorrow night at midnight. And you guys notice I take down my live streams after two days. Um, I've been doing that because it keeps the channel uncluttered and um, I think that the, the live streams are more relevant when, they're, uh, when, when they happen continually and you can communicate with people. Okay, building upon what we learned last week, I want to talk about diatonic chord progressions. All this stuff is in the Beato book, but I'm going to go over it today, okay? So diatonic chord progressions are the chords that come in every key. We're going to talk about major keys. We're going to talk about the relative minor keys, and we're gonna talk about secondary dominant chords today. Okay, so if you're a songwriter, doesn't matter what kind of music you're doing. If you are a rapper, if you uh, do hip hop, EDM, rock, pop, these chord progressions work all the same in any genre of music, okay? Chords go together in a particular way. If you're a jazz musician, they all, chord progressions go together in a particular way. Okay, the primary diatonic chords, we're going to start in the key of C, as I call it, college key. In the key of C major, the pattern goes, as we learned last week, I'm going to review. Major, right? Minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Okay, this is the one chord in C major, C major, D minor, E minor. The slash, that minus signs means minor. E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. The circle means diminished. Lowercase Roman numerals indicate minor chords. Uppercase Roman numerals indicate major chords. So remember, we rehearsed this last week. One, four, and five are major in a major key. Two, three, and six are minor in a major key. Those chords are minor. Chords built on the second, third, and sixth scale degree. Right? And then the chord built on the seventh scale degree is diminished. Now, I'm going to do it for you on the piano here. So, in a C major scale, it's all the white notes of the piano. Okay, so on the first scale degree is going to be C major, right? The fourth scale degree, F major. The fifth scale degree, G major, and then back to C major. But the minor ones, two is D minor. The chord built on the third scale degree, E, is E minor. The chord built on the sixth scale degree is A minor. So when you start getting things like, okay, it's a six, five, four, one progression. Six, five, four, one progression, okay? Somebody asked, Brian just asked, is this live? This is live right now. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so these are called the primary or the diatonic chords of C major. Now. The second row here are what we call the secondary dominant chords. These are the first chords that people add to make their chord progressions more interesting, okay? They are related by a fifth to the pri primary chords here, okay? So A7 is the fifth of the D minor chord, and we call that a five of two, the five chord of the two chord. B7 is the five chord of the three, C7 is the 5 of F, D7 is the 5 of E, E7 is the 5, uh, I'm sorry, D7 is the 5 of G, E7 is the 5 of A minor. Okay, when I say the 5, that means it is the, uh, a fifth, a perfect fifth above those. So if I'm on D, 
and I go up a perfect fifth, I go to the note A, and that's where that major chord is built off of. Why though? Why do you have secondary dominance? They make chord progressions sound more interesting. If I go from C um, to A minor, right? So C, A minor um, to D minor, that would be diatonic. So I'm going one to six to two, okay? But if I use that secondary dominant chord, I go one, two, six, or it could be A major. It doesn't have to be a seventh chord. Now, the reason that that sounds good, that instead of having the A minor leading to the D minor, we have A major that has that leading tone, the C sharp to the D. Okay, that's why these sound strong, these particular progressions. Now, what is the pattern for the secondary dominant chords? Well, if you just remember, the secondary dominant chords fall on the second through sixth scale degree. So the two outer chords don't have a secondary dominant. C actually has the primary dominant right in the key. So only the middle ones, two through six, have their own secondary dominant chords. And if you think about this, if you know the first one is a fifth above, it's, it's either the major, these don't have to be seventh chords, they can simply be major triads, okay? Major chords built on the, uh, on the fifth. Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. That's the pattern of the secondary dominant chords, okay? So whatever key you're in, if you can go a fifth above your two chord, if you're in the key of G, the two chords can be built on the note A. So you go up a fifth, E, and that same pattern will work, okay? You'd go, uh, uh, so it'd be whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, okay? Anyways, so these are the secondary dominant chords. If you have a chord progression like, um, um, a common one would be, uh, well, any of these can actually be common. So if I'm in C major, and I hear an E major chord, and then I hear A minor. I say, okay, E major, that sounds interesting. It doesn't sound too far out. I was like, okay, that sounds close to being the key. That's probably a secondary dominant chord. A lot of these things are, they sound, they sound very common to your ear because they're used all over the place. But you can tell that there's one note, if you really listen, that duh, that note is not from the key. Okay, that's that G sharp from the, it's the third of the, uh, of the E major chord. And then you go to, so, one, five of six to six, okay? So this is how secondary dominant chords work. They work to make things more interesting harmonically, okay? Now, a lot of people will say to me, well, what about other chords? Like, where do you get these borrowed chords and things like that? Um, uh, if you, there's, um, I don't want to even say the name of the song now. I'm, I'm, I'm very hesitant to say this, but you hear chord progressions like this. Well, you'll, you'll recognize these, right? So, so let's see we go. So, so I'm going, listen. Okay, that's a chord progression of a Radiohead song. Thank you, Phil, very much. Good to see you. Okay, so that's that's a Radiohead chord progression. I'm not going to say the song name. I don't need to get demonetized for this. But that particular progression uses the note, the chords C to E major to F major to F minor back to C. Okay, so we're going to talk about that, where these chords come from here. But first, I want to talk about this. Uh, parallel minor. 
Parallel minor is the relative minor built on, it's, it's, it's like the relative minor, but it's built on the tonic. Okay, that's why it's called the parallel minor. Uh, the relative minor would be A minor, which is built on the sixth chord. We talked about that last week. So the par parallel minor is built on a minor scale, an uh, aeolian or natural minor scale, but it's built off the tonic. That's why it's called parallel. So C major, C minor. So these are all the chords in C minor. The one chord in C is C minor, two chord is D diminished, three chord is E flat major, four chord is F minor, the five chord is G minor, the six chord is A flat major, the seven chord is B flat major. So here's the scale we're talking about. So C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So that's a C natural minor scale. These are the chords built on that. The one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord. Now. What I did here was, when I wrote these down, I put flat three, I put flat six, I put flat seven. The reason is, is because I put this in relation to C major. So these chords are in relation to C major. For example, a D diminished chord would be a, a two diminished in the key of C. That's uncommon. But this E flat major, a flat three major, in the key of C, that being a borrowed chord, that is something that you hear that's common, right? So if I have this, um, if I have an E flat major chord like this, and then, I mean, Radiohead plagiarized, David just said, you mean Radiohead plagiarized, yes. <laughs> exactly, I made a video about that, and Lana Del Rey, right? Uh, that's pretty funny. So that's a flat three major to major. Now, being able to understand these chords, hold on, Aaron's saying stuff here to me, okay. Uh, by the way, discount code here for today's video, I have to remember to mention that, is RB307. It's the bundle that I had for sale last week that I never sell on here. It's my Beato book bundled with my 160 page uh, YouTube and Instagram transcription um, PDF. So 600 pages, over 600 pages of it. And we have the, uh, uh, the transcription bundle. For those of you that have the Beato book, we, I'm sorry, we have the transcription book, the YouTube tra transcription book blah, 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 uh, by itself on my website. People have asked me, why don't you sell that? Why don't you sell that? Well, I did sell it last week for the day and I'm selling it today by itself. It's not normally a uh, something on here, but I have it up there. So you can buy either one. If you have the Beato book, you can check that out. We also are having a sale on the Beato ear training method. Same thing. It's 20% off on that. The same discount code RB307. I'm sorry I have to do that. I got to keep remembering to do that. Um, I do my sales here in live streams because uh, because it's great. I like doing it. Um, so flat three to one, okay? B flat major. When you hear that, if I hear that is a very common chord progression. Everybody's always asking me, what, what about B flat major, the flat seven major? How does that relate? Okay, that, it comes from the, the parallel minor, the flat six major. When you hear these, you're gonna say, man, those sound really familiar. The flat six major. Okay, uh, by the way, yeah, the, so somebody just asked about the sale. The sale will go until tomorrow night at midnight Eastern time. Okay, so here's here are th uh, three different chords that are not secondary dominance but are related to the parallel minor, okay? Flat three to one. So I'm going E flat major, C major. Now I'm gonna go flat seven to one, flat seven to one, beautiful. Now here's flat six to one, A flat major to C. That sound great, right? When you start getting into, to, uh, you know, um, You know the uh, everything in its right place. Oh, geez, I shouldn't have said that. They they go through and they find these things. 
Uh, I play I play it by mistake here. Those, um, those kind of chord progressions are related to the parallel minor, except for that flat two. That We have to talk about that after. But Okay, so here are the chords. When you see this four minor chord, you know when you hear that radio head progression here and you've got... And then it goes to... So C major to E major. To F major. F minor. Whoops. To C major. Okay, so you've got one, three major, four, then four minor. Okay, so one of the chords here, if I go like this, C, E major, F major, F minor. This chord is the four minor, right? That comes from here. It comes from the parallel minor. The F major is obviously the four chord in C. That's a four major. This is the one chord. Then we have this E major. Well, where is that? Well, E major is right here. It's the five of six. Okay, so you do this. You go five of six. So that's the chord progression in relation to the key of C. So you have a borrowed chord from the parallel minor, and then you have a secondary dominant there. This is how chord progressions are made up, okay? These are how they're analyzed, and this is how people come up with them. If you only know, this is why I said by the title of this is every musician needs to know these chord progressions. If you just know what chords are in a major key, what the five secondary dominants are, and then go to the parallel minor and know what those chords are. Uh, think about this. Let's look at all the chords you have. You have C major, you have C minor, you have D minor, you have D diminished. You have E flat major, you have uh, E major, or sorry, you have E minor, you have E major, you have F major, you have uh, F, F minor, you have G minor, you have G major, you have A flat major, you have uh, you have a, a major, right? I'm getting all the secondary dominant chords. I get all of them. Uh, oh, I haven't gotten to B yet. I have uh, so D. Yeah, I have D. Oh, I don't have D major even here. There's D major there. Okay, A major and um, A minor, B flat major and B diminished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There are seventeen different chords. Did I get everything? I got G minor, I got F minor, I got E flat major, yeah, A flat, B flat. I got everything. Am I missing anything, Aaron? Muthdar, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Play Eagles Hotel California. Cannot play that on here. That uh, gets the video taken down. Uh, so, all of those chords, if you know this formula, this is all in my Beato book. That's really the best way to memorize it, is to study it every day and memorize it. Um, but this chart, the simple chart, really, it's one, two, it's, it's three sets of chords. Okay? You just have to remember, if you can remember the first pattern, uh, major... One, four, and five are major. Two, three, and six are minor. And seven is diminished. You can build everything off there. Okay, so Aaron has some questions uh, that people are asking. Aaron is not here. He's moderating here, but he's asking me. Um, let's see. What kind of progression has the one and the flat seven? A lot of progressions have one and flat seven. Um, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's say if you had um, anything that would have uh, that's, you know, G, C, D, F in it. You know, if you're in G major, you got one, four, five, flat, seven. Uh, it's, it's in so many tunes. I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think of an actual example of it. Um, it's very common, the flat having a flat seven chord. Um, let's see here. 
Can the secondary dominant be minor, or why is it always why is it major, and and why the secondary dominant? The dominant implies that is that it is major, okay? Because the dominant chord is always going to be a major chord. It, when it's when you're talking about the the theory behind this, right? Because people just refer to secondary dominant chords as major chords or dominant seventh chords, which are major chords. Now, the five chord can be minor, right? You get a minor five in the parallel major, right? So you could have um, C major to G minor. As a matter of fact, thank you, Smid Stab, very much. One of my favorite chord progressions is the um, is going from the one to the to the five minor. There's a video. Um, I just love. I love. Love that one five minor four one beautiful chord progression right I went to my I went to minor eleven on that actually it's but you can go straight minor love that uh, another question. Can you also do chord substitutions from other parallel modes like C Phrygian or Lydian? Yes, you can. Whoever asked that, that's a very sophisticated question. That is much more sophisticated than what I want to get into on this particular video because uh, when you start getting into other modes and taking the uh, and taking the Key, uh, chords from those different modes. For example, C Lydian has a whole set of chords that come with that, right? So um, uh, the, that you can take chords from any of the parallel modes. Okay, I can take them from C minor. I can take them from C Dorian, C Phrygian, C Lydian, C Mixolydian, C Aeolian. Any of those. Uh, let's see here. We got some super chats. Phil says uh, that uh, Rhett is, has a submission thing he's going to be doing on his live stream. Please try to watch it. Rhett is playing your song as a submission as live stream tomorrow. Uh, I will try to watch that, Phil. Um, let's see here. Can I talk about the Ramon style writing? Uh, the Ramones use many of these same kind of things. It's funny. If I look at one of the, what, if I look at a song like a Nirvana song, like um, "In Bloom," okay, uh, songs like that are very diff Are you're really stretching the? the um, I know people say, "What do you talk about with Nirvana?" Kurt Cobain has a lot of very complex chord progressions. The root movements are really, really odd. Uh, a lot of chromatic movement that he would write, used to write great, great melodies over. Uh, somebody has another question here. Can you use parallel major chords for a song in a minor chord, in a minor key? Yes, you can. You can use chords from the parallel major. If you're in C minor, same thing. If I'm in C minor, I can use any of the chords in C major. But in C minor... C minor is going to have its own secondary dominance related to these chords. But once again, I don't want to get into that in this because I feel like when you start uh, uh, trying to learn too much information at a time, it's not good. What you should do is to focus. I try to focus these whiteboard lectures on very simple topics. Last week was the circle of fifths, how to build scales and how to build chord progressions, diatonic chord progressions out of those. And we talked about one, four, five major, two, three, and six is minor in a major key, and seven is diminished. This lesson picks up on that, taking into account that you know this already, you know what the chords are in a major key, and then we talk about secondary dominance. Now this stuff you wanna to commit to memory. All the early part of my Beato book, you wanna to commit to memory. 
because uh, uh, thank you, Crinkle. Appreciate that. Uh, the, there's There are basic things to memorize about theory. What are the sharps and flats in every key? The reason you do that is just so you know how to create major scales. If you can create a major scale, you can pretty much alter a major scale anyway, in any way to create any other type of scale. Um, and knowing basic chord progressions, because uh, I remember watching uh, the master class for, um, uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, EDM producer, where he was talking about, uh, he was talking about that he had to drag notes in MIDI to create chord progressions because he couldn't play them on the keyboard. It's like, dude, come on. What do you mean you can't play them? Uh, try it. So you just skip a note on the thing, you know, and you got a keyboard, C, E, G. You take C, find C, skip over a note. You got E, skip over another note. You got G. I mean, come on, moving around. Instead of dragging this stuff, uh, instead of dragging this stuff, on a MIDI, on a grid in MIDI, it's way faster to be able to play it. That's why this basic, yeah, Dead Mouse. That's who it was, Dead Mouse. You know, and it's funny that he says that, and he's frustrated by it. But it's like, dude, come on, you can get this together. This is easy. Um, okay, so uh, I'm looking for any other questions here, Aaron. This was a great question, though. Can you use parallel major chords in a so song in a minor key? You absolutely can. This particular, uh, knowing this very basic chart here, I know it looks like a lot, but it's actually easy to memorize. All you need to do is know what chords are in a major key. And if you know what chords are in a major key, you know what chords are in a minor key, because minor the minor key always follows the cert the same pattern. I talked about that in the last lecture last week about that. These are important. You got to know major keys, minor keys, okay? Secondary dominance. Then you got most uh, chord progressions. Can you alter the chords? Of course you can. You don't have to play, uh, I, like what I just played C major. Instead of going to G minor, I went to G minor 11. Why? Because it sounds cooler. It just sounds, um, it sounds cool. I could have gone to, to G, you know, G minor nine with the 11. I could have gone to uh, F, add nine, to C, uh, I could have gone to C major with a sus four in it too. Okay. Okay. Uh, discount code RB309. That you can get the bundle that I've only offered last week with the um, Beato book bundled with the uh, with the YouTube Instagram transcription. It's got some of my videos that have. I mean, some of the things are incredibly uh, um, detailed, and it's got all the tablature and things like that, all the transcriptions of all my Instagram improvs um, <clears throat> and a bunch of my YouTube videos. That's 160 pages. My book's 468 pages. So that bundle is over 600, uh, what is that? Yeah, so 620 something pages like that. Uh, that's bundled together, but you can buy, <clears throat> I only offered it last week for the day and a half there. So it's up until tomorrow night at midnight my Instagram YouTube transcription book is uh, is only available. It's not normally available in my store. Um, you guys are amazing. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I'll scan through here. But um, Beato ear training method. You want to be able to hear these things? Go check out my ear training course. There's a discount on that. That's the same code. It's 20% off that. But that's going to enable you to hear things. If I have a chord progression like that, I'm going to be, oh, yeah, it's flat six to one, right? If I hear this, that's flat three to one. If I hear this, 
that's major three to one or three to one, right? Major three, because normally it would be minor, right? The, the uh, um, if you can hear this stuff, you can play it. Being able to hear it means that you can actually instantly hear it and figure out a tune, which is what you want to be able to do without going to a reference instrument. I don't need to pick up my guitar to figure out a song I hear on the radio. I just don't. I just hear it. I'm like, yep, I know that. Oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's one, four minor, five. You know, I mean, I mean, just it becomes easy after a while, but you have to practice it like anything. This you have to memorize. You guys are the best. Thank you for being here on a, on a Saturday. Totally cool. Thank you, Music Fed. Thanks for all the uh, the super chats. We'll see you.